Hello and welcome to Dental Studies Simplified. I'm Dr. Ankita Kotecha and in today's video we will discuss the next part of submerged grafts technique. In the previous part we discussed submerged grafts that is connective tissue in combination with laterally positioned flap or double papilla flap or coronally positioned flap. Now in today's video we will discuss envelope flap technique and its modification tunnel technique or more clearly pouch and tunnel technique. So for the envelope technique mainly this technique was proposed to treat single tooth recession which has shallow to moderate recession depth. For single tooth recession, please remember envelope technique was mainly proposed to treat single tooth recession. So first we will discuss this technique in detail step by step followed by the purpose of introducing or proposing its modification and the modification technique pouch and tunnel in detail. So for this technique just like any other technique we have root surface preparation incisions and the site recipient site preparation the graft procurement and positioning or securing it in the position and finally suturing so the general steps are similar to any root coverage technique but the details of it will vary technique to technique so here as usual the root surface preparation involves scaling and root planing followed by root surface preparation that is root surface bio modification using agents such as citric acid or EDTA because root surface bio modification enhances linkage between the graft and the recipient site. Simple concept behind root surface bio modification. I hope this root surface bio modification is clear. Now that we have perform the root surface preparation that is root surface bio modification and the scaling and root planing. Now is the time to perform the technique that is incisions and the recipient site preparation. So for the recipient site preparation there is only single incision involved here. The first incision is A V-shaped incision, let's say this tooth in question with recession, the first incision is a V-shaped incision to eliminate the circular epithelium. Okay, A V-shaped incision to eliminate the circular epithelium followed by envelope incision, envelope flap preparation that is partial thickness flap preparation by single circular incision. Just a single circular incision into this sulcus after eliminating this circular epithelium by v-shaped incision the next incision is see i told there is only one incision this v-shaped incision is just to eliminate the epithelium circular epithelium the main incision in this technique is this envelope flap preparation if you go back to my video on Vertical releasing incisions in periodontal surgery, there are three types of flap preparation. One, number one is only horizontal incisions, no vertical incision, that is an envelope flap. Number two is horizontal incision with one vertical incision, that's a triangular flap. And number three is one horizontal incision with two vertical releasing incisions, which is a trapezoidal flap. Clear? So here we are not using any vertical releasing incisions, just singular, circular, single and circular incision to prepare an envelope. You insert your blade into the sulcus such that you don't hit the bone. Please mind, mind it very properly. This is a partial thickness flap preparation primarily, but if the biotype or any other circumstances does not allow you to perform partial thickness flap preparation we may go for full thickness flap preparation but as always partial thickness flap preparation is preferable so here partial thickness flap preparation so do not touch the bone do not hit the bone insert the blade 
and just creating a pouch. It is like inserting your blade and creating a, an envelope. So somewhat of this kind of envelope is prepared on both the sides. And this envelope should end coronal to CEG. This is how the envelope is prepared. The rules to prepare this envelope flap are first, it should end coronal to CEG. Second, the depth. How deep should be our envelope flap preparation? 3 to 5 mm in all the directions overall. That is, uh, sorry, apically as well as mesially and laterally. Apically, if we estimate 3 to 5 mm apically, means we have to go beyond mucogingival junction for sure. Not just in this diagram, this is my hand drawn diagram, but in any case, just imagine how much will be the width of attached gingiva. How much? That too, onto a tooth with the gingival recession. So, going 3 to 5 mm apical to the recession line after eliminating the epithelium, circular epithelium means definitely it implies that we have to go beyond the mucogingival junction. The reason for this is going beyond mucogingival junction will allow coronal advancement of the flap post graft placement. So yes, keep in mind, apically we have to cross the mucogingival junction to allow coronal positioning of the flap post operatively to cover the connective tissue graft that we are going to place in the pouch. So the incision involves V-shape incision followed by envelope incision and that is why this technique name is envelope technique. By the single circular incision, we prepare an envelope, envelope uh, similar to a single compartment wallet. This is similar to a single compartment wallet which is opened a pouch or a wallet you can say a single compartment. Clear? Now, once this pouch, this envelope is prepared, please remember these main points. The envelope preparation, let's say somewhat this much of the region is our envelope. This is our envelope. So, see these points, they are coronal to the CEJ. The envelope points proximally ends coronal to CEJ and crossing the mucogingival junction. 3 to 5 mm overall. Now, the next step after the incisions and the envelope is prepared, take a measurement of this site. Just this pouch. Take a measurement with a sterile tin foil template and place it on the donor site which is most commonly a pallet and then collect your connective tissue graft. Please remember in this pouch we are going to place connective tissue graft not a free gingival graft. We are going to cover it with the mucosal flap that is why a connective tissue graft will work here. So the technique to Procure connective tissue graft is already discussed in the previous videos. Please go through them once again for your better understanding. Once the connective tissue graft is procured, that graft is placed inside this pouch. So, let's say if this is our pouch. Here, you place our measured, appropriately measured connective tissue graft. This is our connective tissue graft which is appropriately measured by a sterile tin foil template. Once this graft is placed here, let's say like this. Okay, this is how a graft is placed inside the pouch. Now if you can appreciate the circular epithelium lining here, sorry, this V-shape incision lining here, so this is the outline and this much of the connective tissue graft is visible. Next step is graft procurement and positioning. This graft is positioned into this envelope. 
Now the outline of this mucosal flap, the epithelium, the circular epithelium that we just eliminated by the V-shape incision, the outline, V-shape v outline is now obvious and the connective tissue graft is visible from that pouch, that envelope. So now is the time after graft procurement and positioning. The next step will be suturing which is the final step. Under suturing we have two steps. One is securing the graft in its position and the next suturing is suturing of this flap, mucosal flap, the envelope that we have prepared. So graft securing is by two types of suture, coronally by a sling suture and laterally by interrupted suture. So that is how a connective tissue graft can be secured but because this is an envelope flap we can appreciate that the graft looks well secured in this envelope. Just ensure that it is in intimate contact with the recipient side by nice digital pressure. So nice digital pressure so that there is intimate contact between the graft and the recipient tooth recipient side. There is no blood clot or any dead space in between otherwise it will hamper the graft uptake and vascularity so digital pressure for a while once the graft looks secure stable in its position then suture the flap over it now remember we have uh, prepared our flap beyond the mucogingival junction for allowing coronal positioning of the flap so now position this flap coronally within its capacity remember we are not giving any vertical releasing incisions with just this envelope flap preparation because we have crossed the mucogingival junction and relieved the tensions in its apical border this envelope flap will be capable of positioning coronally it will advance coronally so within its capacity make sure you are very gentle here so within its capacity position it coronally and Secure it with sling suture. So the final picture should look somewhat with the sling suture. That is around the neck of the tooth. And the graft within. The coronal positioning of the flap is to cover the connective tissue graft. Connective tissue graft must not be exposed as much as possible. So the coronal positioning of the flap is to cover the connective tissue graft and secure it more properly. So this is the reason coronal positioning of the flap is done and coronal position, coronally positioned envelope flap is secured by a cross sling suture. Sling suture that is passing around the neck of the tooth. This will secure the flap in its apical coronal position that is the advancement of the flap then will be well secured by these sling suture. So if I redraw the final post operative, the final post operative must look somewhat onto this tooth. The final post operative will look the graft inside and the flap here, which is secured by a cross link suture. Clear? This is the final post operative in envelope technique. So this completes the technique, envelope technique. A quick summary, V-shape incision to eliminate the circular epithelium. Of course, first root preparation that is root planing and root surface biomodification followed by incisions that is eliminating the circular epithelium and preparing a, an envelope that is a single circular incision. Partial thickness Coronal to CEG, 3 to 5 mm overall. There is mesial, distal and apical as well such that we cross the mucogingival junction because we want to advance it coronally post-operatively. Corrective tissue graft procurement and positioning it. Once the graft is secure in its position, suturing it. Suturing it is coronal, coronally cross link sutures for the flap securement. Okay. This completes envelope technique. Now, as we all already discussed, envelope technique was mainly proposed for single tooth recession. What about multiple tooth recession? Multiple teeth areas with multiple recessions on adjacent teeth. So for that reason, its alternative, its modification was proposed which is a tunnel technique or also called as pouch and tunnel technique. So now we will discuss pouch and tunnel technique. Pouch and tunnel technique is mainly indicated in teeth with 
multiple recession. So let's say multiple teeth with recession. So let's say all these teeth have recession. And it's the mucosal junction. Now in this case, how to execute envelope technique by its modification. Imagine preparing individual envelopes, placing connective tissue graph, taking measurements of individual pouches and individual envelopes and placing connective tissue parts into each envelope and then securing each graft and then suturing each envelope. How tedious job will that be? Because they are, there are multiple recessions adjacent tooth with gingival recession. Its modification is proposed wherein the pouches, the envelope prepared are of similar manner. That is eliminating this circular epithelium and giving circular incisions circular incisions on individual tooth such that envelopes are prepared. The main additional step here is all these pouches like say the pouches will be of this manner. You can see the overlap. Yes, this is the main step here. All these pouches should be interconnected but the main step why I am emphasizing this is the main step because we don't dissect or split open the papilla remember we are discussing periodontal plastic and aesthetic surgery and papilla forms the most important part of this aesthetic complex so do not disturb or destroy the papilla we are trying to perform an aesthetic surgery. That is why papilla preservation should be our prime concern here. Because we are attempting root coverage, the technique involves multiple gingival recessions root coverage by preparing multiple pouches which are interconnected. Imagine passing through a tunnel. Sometimes during our journey, we pass through a tunnel. So there is a tunnel. There are two walls on each side, one on each side. So here also in this tunnel that is prepared, one wall is the undersurface of the papilla and the other wall will be partial thickness flap preparation, so periosteum, periosteum or periosteal bed and if full thickness flap preparation, it will be a bone, but uh, partial thickness flap preparation is always preferable. Clear? So, all these individual pouches or envelopes as discussed just now in the envelope technique are prepared. That is the main difference between envelope technique and its modification because the modification is mainly proposed for treating multiple gingival recessions. Teeth with gingival recession on adjacent teeth. Okay, areas with multiple gingival recession. So, individual pouches are prepared. Yes, it is only limited till here. That is individual pouches are prepared. Imagine preparing individual pouches or envelopes, in taking measurement of individual envelope and collecting connective tissue graph for individual envelope, suturing, securing everything for individual tooth one by one. So that is why this individual envelopes preparation is the only step here. These individual envelopes are interconnected proximally. So, so when we are preparing envelopes for pouch and tunnel technique that is multiple recessions make sure these individual envelopes while preparing these envelopes the second envelope should overlap the first envelope interproximally that is laterally these envelopes should be interconnected these envelope preparations should be interconnected make sure the papilla is preserved make sure the papilla is not dissected at any cost under any circumstances otherwise the technique will be a failure, it will be difficult to implement this technique particularly. So, these individual pouches are prepared interconnected laterally so that a tunnel is created from where just like how we pass through our tunnel, through a tunnel, our vehicle passes through a tunnel. Similarly, in this tunnel that is prepared, we will pass our connective tissue graft. So, the preparation of the flap looks like 
so here from here if we begin this is our incision and the flap preparation design the papilla are intact that is why when we pass our connective tissue it will go from the under surface and come out like this but this portion this papilla portion will cover the connective tissue graft and help in securing the connective tissue graft in its position so it is like passing through a tunnel and then once this connective tissue graft is secured in its position then give individual coronal sling sutures to cover the connective tissue graft and secure the flap in its apico coronal position clear so now here the final post operative picture so this this is the amount of connective tissue graft that will be utilized to cover the recession on multiple teeth this is our connective tissue graft and the flap overlapping it will be because the papilla are just preserved the coronal positioning of the graft as we all know it should be at cj or slightly coronal to the cj because we are performing root coverage so this will be the final position of the root coverage technique envelope techniques modification tunnel technique with the coronal sling suture for individual tooth post repositioning of the flap that is coronal advancement or positioning of the flap so this completes the technique pouch and tunnel technique the modification of the original envelope technique proposed to treat multiple gingival recessions at the same time so this completes the topic submerged grafts in two parts in the previous video we discussed connective tissue graft in combination with laterally positioned flap or double papilla flap or coronal position flap and in today's video we discussed envelope technique and its modification pouch and tunnel technique in my next video we will discuss alternate papilla technique alternate papilla technique is mainly discussed in combination with alloderm that is why i decided to take up as a separate video wherein we will discuss alloderm briefly and the entire technique alternate papilla technique i hope these techniques are clear to you all but if you still have any doubts or any queries feel free to ask me in the comment section below or mail me at my email id dentalstudiesimplified@gmail.com thank you for watching and listening to me study well have a good day stay safe